morning. <laughs> I would like to welcome everyone to the Saskatchewan Registered Nurses Association's Awards of Excellence and acknowledge that acknowledge those that are joining us today on Treaty 2, 4, 5, 6, and 8 and 10 territories and homeland of the Métis. My name is Sabine Ahmed and I'm honored to be your MC for the SRNA's first ever virtual awards of excellence. On behalf of the SRNA council and staff, I welcome you and thank each of you for taking the time to be here to celebrate these award winners. First, I would like to acknowledge the awards committee members, Shauna Bright, RN and the awards committee chair, Sharon Ahenikiu, RN, Jan Divitt, public representative, Celine Stoles, RN, Pat Tasiak, RN, Tanya Blakely, staff liaison, and Leslie Stronach, staff support. Thank you for your work in making it possible to recognize the contributions of our award recipients. Now tonight we are celebrating registered nursing as we pay tribute to the registered nurses, students, and members of the public who have made an outstanding contribution in nursing practice here in Saskatchewan and abroad. All the award recipients have demonstrated commitment, dedication, and passion for nursing and healthcare, and have shown tremendous leadership by truly being voices in action. Now, we wouldn't be here tonight without those who took the time to nominate their colleagues for an award of excellence. Thank you to those who have taken the time to ensure that your colleagues and your peers are recognized for the contributions they have made and are so deserving of recognition. Now tonight, we will summarize the contributions of each award recipient, but due to time constraints, we can't possibly share everything they have contributed. We encourage you, if you have the opportunity, to connect with the award recipients so you can learn even more about them and about their contributions. And finally, thank you to our sponsors this evening, Health Careers in Saskatchewan and Saskatchewan Polytechnic for helping us make this live virtual event happen. I now invite Cindy Smith, RN and SRNA Executive Director to say a few words. Hello everyone, and thank you for being here with us this evening. As Executive Director of the SRNA and as a registered nurse, the Awards of Excellence has always been a special event for me. Taking the initiative and the time to celebrate those who have made great contributions to our profession is indeed a very important initiative. While we had hoped this celebration would be in person, we are very happy to be here in a virtual format to honor your outstanding contributions to registered nursing. I want to personally congratulate and thank each and every one of our award recipients for their tremendous contributions. Normally, during our usual in-person event, I would have the opportunity to congratulate each of you personally and we really wanted to be able to celebrate in person again. However, unfortunately, the times we live in today don't lend themselves to a face-to-face -face gathering of this size. Therefore, we've done our very best to put together a virtual celebration that will pay tribute to all of you in the way that you deserve. Following our time together tonight, I encourage you to continue your celebrations with those around you Toast yourself with a glass of wine or champagne if that is something that is meaningful to you. And think about all the contributions that you have made. You should be very proud of yourselves. Receiving an award of excellence is truly an honor very few receive. And I'm sad to say this will be the final time the SRNA is hosting the Awards of Excellence making your award tonight even more special. For 30 years, starting with the Millennium Awards in 1990 and morphing into the Awards of Excellence in 2001, these awards have been used to honor the recipients who have demonstrated a dedication and passion for nursing and healthcare. The names of each award are in recognition of the founding members of the SRNA. And while we close a chapter this year, we are thankful for those that have come before us and laid the groundwork for the important work we continue to do. In November 2019, 
the SRNA Council made the unanimous decision to strengthen the three pillars of nursing by separating the regulatory and association functions of the SRNA and support the formation of a separate association. This move to a, sep to, to a separate association is a proactive approach in recognition of the need for a strong advocacy voice for the profession but it will mean that this very special celebration is the last time that the SRNA will host the Awards of Excellence. So with that, please enjoy your evening as we all gather to celebrate you. Thank you. Now I would like to invite Warren Cook, RN and SRNA Council President to come forward and say a few words. Hi, over the years, the Awards of Excellence have helped us to acknowledge the ongoing accomplishments of RNs, NPs, RNAAPs, nursing students, and members of the public who have contributed to improving and advancing the health of the people of Saskatchewan. I am so honored to be here tonight to celebrate our recipients for their well-deserved awards in recognition of all they have accomplished and all they have contributed. Earlier this week, we launched our conference, Voices in Action, a time for resilience and reinvention. During this time of change and transition in healthcare, it is clear that there is a need for a strong voice in registered nursing. And while we move towards a single mandate of regulation and make space for the creation of a separate association for registered nursing, I would certainly be remiss if I did not acknowledge the strong voices our award winners already have. They contribute to moving the profession forward, to creating opportunities for nurses far beyond their own circles and elevate registered nurses everywhere. Our distinguished honorees tonight, I'd like to bring your attention to some of their collective career highlights to demonstrate the impact of their work. One has dedicated almost 50 years to nursing education in Saskatchewan. Another was instrumental in developing a student exchange program between Canada Mexico and the United States. One has secured more than $2 million in funding for research initiatives, while another was involved in the development of Saskatchewan's HIV strategy and the implementation of the needle exchange program in Sturgeon Lake, First Nation. <clears throat> One's leadership, creativity and innovation transformed patient care and nursing practice on a unit and led the way for many other units to replicate it and yet another's dedication to her community has manifested in an initiative where surplus produce gardens was harvested by nursing students and donated to local charities as a means to address food security and wastage. These incredible achievements are, are not to go unnoticed and we are so happy we can celebrate them here this evening. Over the next week and a half, we will be encouraged to use our voices and put them in into action for the sake of the profession. Tonight is a great opportunity to celebrate the legacy nursing has created in the province and lay the foundation for what's to come moving forward. So thank you for joining us for this final awards of excellence and being a part of our collective history. Thank you so much, Cindy and Warren. Now, although I'm not a registered nurse myself, I've had the chance to witness firsthand the incredible positive impact your work has on the most vulnerable receiving your care. And I'm gonna go off script for just a second because these aren't just words I'm reading off a script. I have seen it firsthand with how many nurses have cared for my dad in recent years, months, and days. So I would like to sincerely thank you. As Cindy and Warren both mentioned, tonight we are celebrating the last of a long legacy of Awards of Excellence winners, as this marks the last celebration. For more than 30 years, the SRNA has honored the contributions of RNs, nursing students, and members of the public through the Awards of Excellence. And while this chapter comes to a close tonight, we wanted to gather some special people to celebrate our honorees. I want to extend my congratulations to all of the uh, awards of excellence recipients. Nursing is not a job, it is a profession. You help people stay healthy. You work with people who are ill to become healthy again. And for those who are dying, 
you've helped them live their last few days in the most comfort possible. As an RM, you have made this world a better place. And for the member of the public who has dedicated so much time and effort to registered nurses across this province, we say thank you to you as well. Congratulations to all, job well done. Hey everyone, this is Jess Moskaluk and I am thrilled to be here virtually with you guys to celebrate the Saskatchewan Registered Nurses Association's Awards of Excellence, celebrating outstanding contributions in nursing right here in Saskatchewan. Um, I just wanted to say thank you so much. I know it's been an exceptionally difficult year for everybody, but um, hopefully most of your experience has been positive. Um, you guys are doing a really, really great thing and um, we're, we're pretty lucky to have each and every one of you. So thank you so much um, and have a great night. Hi there. As the Saskatchewan Registered Nurses Association's Awards of Excellence celebrate outstanding contributions in nursing in Saskatchewan, I'd like to send a big congratulations to the honorees, the RNs, the students and the public. Congratulations. Stay safe, stay healthy and enjoy. Hey there everybody over at the Saskatchewan Registered Nurses Association. I'm Haley Wickenheiser here with my nieces, Bryn and Addie, also called the Minions. And we just want to send our uh, heartfelt thank you and celebrate the outstanding contributions uh, that all of you have done to um, make nursing in Saskatchewan as outstanding as it is. Uh, I know you guys are having a virtual celebration <laughs> and I know these days are not easy um, in the hospital, in the long-term care homes, wherever you might be, um, but uh, truly nurses are the best. You learn that early in med school. Be nice to the nurses always and uh, you guys make such a massive difference. So uh, truly a heartfelt thank you and uh, thank you for keeping us all safe during these times. Hey guys, what do you have to say? Say thanks. Thanks. Okay, have a great night guys. Thanks. Wow, what a great dedication. Thank you for passing along your heartfelt congratulations to these deserving winners. You just heard messages from Dr. Gordon Barnhart, 20th Lieutenant Governor of Saskatchewan and SRNA Honorary Membership Recipient, Jess Moskaluk, Saskatchewan Country Artist, Gloria Rubin, Canadian Actress, some of you may remember her from the TV series ER, and Haley Wickenheiser, Olympian, Mental Health Advocate, and Medical Student. Now, we are going to start the award ceremonies tonight with the Effie Feeney Award for Excellence in Nursing Research. This award is given to a registered nurse and or group of registered nurses who have made an outstanding contribution in the field of nursing or health-related research that enhances the nursing profession. This year's award recipient is Dr. Marcella Ogunchuk. Dr. Marcella Ogunchuk's program of research examines pathways for early interventions with youth and Indigenous communities. She engages in research that focuses on enhancing the health and well being of children, youth, families, and communities through sharing her passion for community health through her research in oral health with the Indigenous communities and addictions education with youth. Marcella's nominators highlighted that she demonstrates great leadership when working with others. She is collaborative and includes students whenever possible. She is passionate about her research and demands excellence, but is cons consultative, supportive and flexible and provides great mentorship. Marcella demonstrates a strong commitment to the next generation of scholars and researchers. As one of her former students put it, without her support and expertise, I would never have been able to publish my paper, nor would I have developed an interest in nursing research. Marcella has secured or participated in securing in excess of $2 million in funding since 2013 from numerous sources. She has clearly integrated research into clinical practice and teaching in a way that would be considered outstanding and as a result she has demonstrated excellence in all aspects of her practice. Now before asking Marcella to accept her award, her nominators have a few things to say about her. My name is Viv Ramsden. I'm actually a registered nurse. I'm a professor in the Department of Academic Family Medicine at the University of Saskatchewan. 
and my focus is on participatory research. The reason I nominated Marcella was the fact that in, she actually integrates research into practice. Her, her basic uh, parameters are around clinical practice and in and within that she actually engages in large research projects, small quality improvement projects, and program evaluation, as well as teaching uh, nursing students in a variety of settings. Well, I think when I look at Marcella's CV and when I look at Marcella and the work that she's doing, there's many aspects of her work that are below the surface, not seen, but the bottom lines are when you apply for grants and you actually get them uh, approved and funded, I mean those are things that don't just happen. Marcella, you and I have talked about this many times in terms of how your work has grown over the years. So I congratulate you on winning the Effie Finney Award. And it's uh, a pleasure to see your practice grow and involve research in new ways. And I hope you celebrate with your family and friends as you move this forward in the College of Nursing this fall. Congratulations, Marcella. You are most deserving of this award and we are thankful for all your contributions in the field of nursing and health-related research that enhances the nursing profession. I now ask that you come online and accept your award. Thank you. Um, it's, it's most humbling to hear um, someone, a colleague that has mentored me uh, to speak about my work. So um, it's a privilege to, to be here um, virtually to accept the award. And I thank my colleagues at the College of Nursing at the University of Saskatchewan, um, my colleagues who I research with, for the opportunity to work with you, to learn from you, and to be able to do my research. Because without you, there's no way possible I could um, be here today. And finally, it's with deep gratitude to be able to work and to the communities and to all the students that I've um, been able to work with in community to um, write the grants and to do the research in the hopes then that the work we do together is sustainable. Thank you very much. Congratulations once again. Now the next award is the Elizabeth Van Valkenburg Award for Excellence in Nursing Education. This award is given to a registered nurse or a group of registered nurses who have made an outstanding contribution in the field of nursing education. The award recipient is Cheryl Bessie. Cheryl Bessie demonstrates a high standard of student-centered approaches to undergraduate nursing education and the scholarship of teaching and learning. She designed the Bringing It to the Bedside Teaching Innovation in 2017 as a strategy for students to enhance their integration of the course learning outcomes. The evidence from this innovation has been presented at a Western Regional Nursing Education Conference and is now a published work authored by Cheryl. Cheryl is an active contributing member of the Undergraduate Education Committee, working on curriculum consistency, improvements, and policy. Cheryl prepares new and experienced clinical and lab instructors by providing an annual professional development day to support their work with the students and integration of the curriculum. Cheryl is an inspiring colleague, mentor, teacher, scholar, and proud SRNA member and University of Saskatchewan College of Nursing alumna. Her dedication to nursing leadership is evident in all of her actions. Cheryl gives an annual welcome lecture to the new students and enthusiastically shares her story of first entering nursing education and her career journey. Now, before asking Cheryl to accept her award, her nominators had a few things to say about her. We nominated Cheryl Bessie for this prestigious award because she has dedicated most of her career to nursing education. 
She has inspired countless nursing students, registered nurses, and colleagues. Cheryl is highly committed to best practice. She is a knowledgeable clinician who stays up to date with our evolving profession. She is passionate about the scholarship of teaching and learning. Cheryl is innovative and creative with her teaching. She is able to engage learners in a lab setting, in the clinical setting, in the classroom setting, and even in a virtual environment. Cheryl serves as a mentor for many within the College of Nursing. She is seen as a leader and as an advocate. She is admired for her work ethic and her willingness to embrace change. I have a bit of a unique perspective because I had the privilege of being one of Cheryl's students many months ago. I also have the good fortune of being one of her colleagues. She has profoundly impacted my career and my nursing practice. It is a privilege to work with such an exceptional educator and inspiring mentor. Thank you, Cheryl, for all you do. Congratulations, Cheryl. It is so wonderful to hear your incredible contributions to nursing education in the province, and thank you for your dedication to the profession. I now ask that you come online and accept your award. Hello. Um, I, I kind of am left speechless. I, uh, I didn't, I feel like, um, I didn't always want to be a nurse. And so I feel like I came about this kind of in an uninspired way or by accident. So to, um, to, to know personally that I couldn't have got it better because I love every, every morning when I get up and get to go be a nurse and teach nursing students. But to be honored with an award for that is extremely humbling um, to do something that I love. I'd like to thank the SRNA for um, even having these awards. And you know, this celebration has been amazing so far. I congratulate you on putting this together because it doesn't really feel virtual. And I feel like, um, you know, if it's the last uh, awards ceremony and it's in the year of the nurse and midwife, it's especially honoring to, to be receiving this award. Um, I have to thank those who nominated me um, for, for this, Jill Zadunek, Shelley Peacock and Anna Power Horlock. Horlick. It's a funny thing to be nominated by people who inspire you and who are also amazing educators. I feel like we should all be up here together because I feel like nursing is a team sport and nursing education is a team sport. I can't do what I do without wonderful people to work with. So lastly, I guess I would just like to thank the students. Um, they're the reason I'm here. And over the last 24 years, I've worked with some amazing, amazing students. And it's my honor and privilege to um, teach them, but also learn from them and be inspired by them. So they are the reason I do this and maybe the reason I'm good at it because I love it, because I love them. So, um, you know, <clears throat> during the pan pandemic, I know we've, we've all said it, that it's been challenging and hard. And maybe there were days when I questioned whether I actually was a good educator anymore, but to see the resilience and strength that these students bring is inspirational. So it's assured me the future of our profession is bright. So thank you so much for this award. Congratulations once again, Cheryl. Now the next SRNA award is the Granger Campbell Award for Excellence in Direct Care. The Granger Campbell Award is given to a registered nurse and or group of registered nurses who demonstrate direct care excellence in any practice setting. This year's award recipient is Sherry Lynn Bray. Sherry Lynn Bray and the Unit 4A ACU Medicine Nurses at the Pasqua Hospital have worked hard to change the workplace culture where RNs, physicians, pharmacists, physiotherapists, social workers, and other healthcare professionals work collaboratively towards a common goal, safe, proactive, and holistic care that includes and empowers patients and families. Sherry Lynn and the nursing team on 4A have demonstrated excellence in clinical decision making and leadership in nursing practice through the successful implementation of the Accountable Care Unit, 
also known as ACU, model, model of care. This team has been integral in creating new processes to provide quality health care that includes the patient and their families in a more meaningful way. With Sherry Lynn's leadership, the nursing team developed and implemented a standardized bedside handover tool and processes that allow them to present relevant and accurate reports in three to five minutes or less at the bedside to the patients and the healthcare team. The handover tools include a safety quality checklist and status update that is central to daily patient care and improves and advances medicine nursing practice. The use these standardized tools and processes for nursing has improved overall communication and reduced adverse outcomes. The changes in patient care have resulted in decreased patient complaints, increased patient satisfaction with pain management, safety and patient-centered care, and staff satisfaction. Sherry Lynn's nominators note that her leadership, innovation, and enthusiasm with the 4A nurses led to a successful implementation of Canada's first ACU on a medicine unit, which has led to the provincial rollout of ACUs right across Saskatchewan. Let's see what our nominators had to say. Hi everyone, my name is Karen Lorenz and I'm here to let everyone know why I nominated Sherry Lynn Bray for the Granger Campbell Award. You know, Sherry really deserves this award. Um, she deserves to be recognized for her contributions in leadership in the implementation and further development of the very first accountable care unit in Canada. Um, it was a long road. She demonstrated her leadership and her passion for nursing and patient care and working with teams and advancing nursing practice as we know it. She was present and engage and involve and ensure that the team's voices were heard. We wouldn't be where we are today without her leadership and I'm very honored and grateful to know her and I wish you all the best Sherry. Congratulations. Congratulations to Sherilyn and the entire unit, 4A ACU Medicine Nurses. Your ingenuity and commitment to client well-being in the province is outstanding. I now ask that Sherilyn come online and accept her award. Well, thank you very much. I have to start by saying um, it is a complete honor and privilege to be nominated by my peers. And I have to thank the SRNA for this prestigious award, actually. Um, it means more to me than I can probably articulate here. Um, I do want to just quickly talk, because some people don't know what accountable care unit are or what an accountable care unit is. And I just want to highlight that it's, it's a, a care model that's team-based. And it's based on four principles, the first one being it's co-led by a nurse and a physician. It's geographically located, so we actually in our case, focused on getting our physicians together in one spot and working on that unit with us. It, another, the third principle is unit-based routines, which sounds simple, but it's all about understanding our acres in the day for the families and the patients and, and our teams so we know where to do our work. And then finally, the last one is something called unit-based metrics, which is a fancy word for saying we track and, and evaluate our performance and course correct to make sure the interventions we're using are appropriate. This sounds like a simple concept, and it, it, in essence it is, but I need to tell you, uh, I had no idea what I was up for and what we were going to about to do, and it, it took us a lot of hard work and a lot of energy, and um, we had a lot of doubt and misgivings and never sure if we were on the right way, on the right path. But I want to quickly share one story that left a huge impact on my life. Um, in the life of the ACU, and I realized perhaps we did more than just implement a care model. And it, 
my role as the co-lead and the unit manager was to support the, the team and the staff and provide feedback on, on their work. And, and this day I was following the team on as they were performing their cyber, which is called Structured Interdisciplinary Bedside Rounds. In essence, the nurse, the physician, the pharmacist, the social worker, dietitian, physiotherapist, anyone who has anything to do with care meets with the team together and they start and they go from bed to bed and engage and wrap around the patient and their family. And in a very succinct five minutes or less, they adjust and create a plan of care and goals and they incorporate it. And you might think I'm about to talk about how brilliant this team was, and they are brilliant. It was wonderful to watch. But what I was left with that day was realizing I saw at every bedside, patients sitting up, families at the bedside, if they could, and there were smiles and there was engagement. And gone was what I had seen previous to ACU, fear, anxiety, and worry. And for me, the most profound effect, and actually left me quite emotional, was that these people were finally seen and heard and felt like they had a voice in their own care. And that, for me, was the day I knew we had achieved something even more important. So on behalf of, well, actually, no, I dedicate this award to the 70-year-old man whose body is failing him, but his mind is alert and bright, who finds himself admitted in the hospital and is incredibly worried about his wife, who he has been the caregiver for. And he can't have a phone or doesn't have a phone, so we provided him with a phone that doesn't work, and no one is listening to him because he needs to talk to her. And he's also the same man that's been given an ostomy mattress because he has some, we're worried about his wounds, and that ostomy mattress doesn't allow him to sleep. So now he's, not sleeping, he's unhappy, and he doesn't want to eat, and he's losing weight, and he doesn't want to take his meds. And out in the hallway is the grandson who came to visit this man who has been like a father to him. And he's frustrated because he's in a place where he needs help. And he's not getting the care he deserves or needs, and he can't figure out why no one's helping him. And he's talking to the nurse who's incredibly frustrated because she can't give him the answers he's looking for. And I dedicate this award to the pharmacist who recognizes that the patient has lost weight and cannot find an accurate weight anywhere. And to the social worker who knows that there's more to care for this person than just him. He has a, a wife and the family dynamics, but there's no physician around to engage. And to the dietitian who understands that the, fam, the patient's not eating and can't understand why we don't recognize that food is medicine. And to the physiotherapist who makes a plan to make sure that this patient is walking because we know functional mobility is key to getting people out of the hospital in a timely manner, and yet only the physio seems to be doing the work. And for the physician who comes and wants to put all these pieces together but can't have conversations with anyone because everybody's on a different schedule and the care doesn't progress. And finally, to the registered nurse and the LPNs and all the other care team members, but mostly that nurse in the hallway, who is so frustrated that she can't give the grandson the answers he wants and knows she should be able to, and has to leave him and head into the, grand, the grandfather's room, and also is knowing that she's not being able to give him the answers and the care she would like to. So... On behalf of the entire Accountable Care Unit team, now I need to tell you there are so many people who've touched this work, so many people from all levels of the organization. I, I will never be able to name them all, and I want to because without any of them, none of this work would have happened. But I'm going to name a few people that are instrumental. First, Dr. Jason Stein, who is the brainchild of the ACU. John Ash and Dr. Ron Taylor. For without those two, none of this work would have happened. Karen Lorenz, who you met, who took a chance on me and thought, I can do some of this work. Roseanne Nasser, our team cheerleader who said, never give up. Please keep going. To the patients and the families who said, you have to do this. We cannot keep doing care in the hospital the way we've been doing it. Just do it. This is the right thing to do. And finally, and last but not least, to the nursing staff on 4A who progressed the care, who took the chance, 
who made the plans, evaluated the procedures, who said, this doesn't work, this does work, let's do this, please do not let us go back to not taking care of our patients. Help us do this work. I accept this award on their behalf. Thank you very much. Sherilyn, a lot of the things that you just said hit a lot closer to home than I was expecting. So for what you have done and what you are doing, thank you. The next award is the Award for Excellence in Truth and Reconciliation. This award is given to a registered nurse and or group of registered nurses who is moving reconciliation forward in Saskatchewan. The award criteria is based on the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada calls to action. Calls to action numbers 18 through 22 have been used as a foundation of this award. The recipient of the Award for Excellence in Truth and Reconciliation is Norma Rabbitskin. Norma Rabbitskin, registered nurse and knowledge keeper, has been able to braid Western and traditional health modalities with the elders' wisdom of the community of Sturgeon Lake First Nation. This has and continues to provide great comfort for individuals, patients, and healthcare providers while enriching care and the trust in the care provided by the healthcare team. Her knowledge supports and encourages all members of the healthcare team to provide more meaningful and comprehensive care in and with the community. Norma's accomplishments have changed practice and made an impact on the health and well being of individuals and families in the community that she serves. Her passion for grounding practice, education, and research and culture has led to, tr led to transformation. All the changes and transformations have been value-driven with the individual or patients, healthcare providers, and the community at Sturgeon Lake First Nation being authentically engaged in all aspects of the processes, which includes research and education. Recently, Norma has led the work in repatriation of the ceremonies and knowledge regarding childbirth in and with her community. She has shared the knowledge from her work with elders and knowledge keepers with pregnant women, which reconnects them with their heritage or community, thus building a support system for new mothers and babies. Her nominators note that she continues to rem remind all of us that we need to recognize other ways of knowing, to think outside of the box, to respect Indigenous knowledge and healthcare, and to understand the many generations upon which this has been built. Before asking Norma to accept her award, her nominators have a few things to say about her. I nominated Norma because, in fact, she actually demonstrates putting culture into everyday practice. And, and Truth and Reconciliation is really about um, holistic engagement, finding some way to bring together both traditional healing practices or medicine and Western practices which are part of our everyday nursing practice. Having worked with Norma at Sturgeon Lake First Nation for a number of years now, I've watched her grow and mature in ways that were probably not even dreamed of several years ago as we moved through this process of asking and answering questions that were meaningful to the community. But this grounding in culture actually has changed the community. The entire community is engaged. I'm amazed. It's awe-inspiring to watch. And so if you have an opportunity to walk beside her, she actually teaches you many things by just actually asking questions. And in responding to those questions, you actually learn a lot about culture and sensitivity and a lot of humility. Norma, congratulations. This is really big and it really actually demonstrates how grounded in culture is important in both practice, education, and research. I'm humbled to be able to share this with you. Congratulations, Norma. 
thank you for your commitment and reminding us that we must respect Indigenous knowledge in order to move reconciliation forward in Saskatchewan and for sharing your knowledge with your community and colleagues. I now ask that you come online and accept your award. Nigana notes not in an askumama motawi now. The big, the big, the big witch he hit. Capi see the school, tomat the skin, a muskicure scorn. Kisa Tuskian. An askumout at the geese cow. He be meat. He sucked he hit, his witchy tasian, and I see Nimak. Sigason saw no good in be so school, you want to be me, Guyan. In an ask with a man, oh, yeah, and get them neck, Nigigo, Kagi, GP, GP, me, check over here, see Chigiona, Tansky, say, is at a scatama, dancing each the mark is a great chicken. And ask a man, a mamma, and ask a man, papa, Gakio, Kagi, be, mamma, be, see the scotchic, if you reach it, it's not tachic. And ask a man, get them nanak, and ask a man, Gakio, if he Sit a scarf each, a cracky, and ask a mouky, hogger, gaggy be, which he hits some old chick, hogger, gum, sit a scotic that a geese cow, a gosh choker yak. Now the way we walk, a kyogama that go with a bit up, or cracky, a cigatiga, a good kiss a bona. You will know it is the higgy be who are bad the ocean, Gabby of Piggy and the woman got chita, who got musky cuscre, and your woman is the nigger not even non scooterman, who go gaki running on in tochic. I have give them that your woman nigger in a tin and a scooterman. First of all, thank you. I wanted to acknowledge this um, recognition in my language, my Cree language. I gave thanks. Um, I gave thanks to Creator for life, for the blessings of blessing me to do this beautiful work, life's work, my passion to serve the people. I gave thanks to my parents who, who laid the, and my grandparents for instilling the values and the traditions of Cree culture. My Kiteak, the old ones, the healers, my mentors, and whom I still apprentice to this day. I want to recognize my mom, who was my foremost, my teacher, and my grandparents, the past healers who have gone home, who came and helped us, uh, Mark Thompson, Alan, Alan Jacobs, who has gone home, and presently, who continues to instill our teachings right now is Philip Ogier, Doreen Day, Leah Bell. Those are my teachers that continue to guide me as well, um, Kathy Bird, and of course, William, William Ermine, who I had a privilege to work with alongside. And so I also wanna thank my family, my husband, my children, my grandchildren, and the family, my family, uh, my brothers and sisters, who've been there throughout my nursing career, sacrificing their, their time in order for me to be at service for the people. My journey in this nursing field, which is over 31 years, has never been done alone. There's been teachers who laid that foundation, elders, colleagues, mentors, friends, leadership, managers, health directors, my health team in Sturgeon Lake, Shirley Big Head. All that has supported and helped me along to, to, to the great extent to reach this level of recognition. I wanna thank my nominator, whom is my mentor, confidant, sister, Dr. Vivian Ramston, whom I had the privilege to learn from and continue to work within transforming health services in the community I currently work with. And I wanna thank Sturgeon Lake for laying that foundation and always being ready for change. I also wanna thank 
Dr. Smith Windsor and Dr. B Brianna Davis for always being all and also being willing to work together with our healers in transforming care and in accepting our 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 uh, our holistic ways of being. I want to thank SRNA for recognizing Indigenous health and that indeed Indigenous nurses are making a great impact in their communities in all health settings. Receiving this award is humbling and I'm very honored. This shows that we are working towards reconciliation, reconciling the wrongs that have been done to our people. It is only by recognizing that our culture is important. It is the foundation respecting and allowing the work, allowing the nations to lead the, to transform their own lives within the First Nations. Part of this work requires when we serve our clients, we have to understand the population we're serving, to understand where we've been, to understand our ways of being. There is a system in place that already exists in our community. So as, na as nurses, we, have, we need to shift our paradigm to be the servants to our clients, family and community. I would like to dedicate this award to my clients that are continuing to still face a lot of the mistreatments, discrimination that is happening across Canada. But with together, we can make that change of understanding who we are and our patients. We have to really work together. And I dedicate this award also to Joyce, who lost her life a couple of days ago. This is what we need to change. We need to change and bring healing back as nurses. It is our responsibility not to do harm anymore. I also would like to accept this award on behalf of my clients, my peers, my indigenous nurses, because they are, you don't hear about them. They're out there in the communities working hard, hard with all their heart. So I dedicate this to uh, every one of those nurses. There's many of them that I had the privilege to work with and can continue to work with. So thank you to my fellow nominees as well. Thank you so much. Bye, hi. Thank you and congratulations once again, Norma. Our next award of the evening is the Ruth Hicks Award for Student Leadership. This award is given to a Saskatchewan nursing student or a group of nursing students who demonstrate leadership as an individual or as a group. This year, we have two recipients of the Ruth Hicks Award for Student Leadership. Our first recipient is Terry Rothenberger. At the time of her nomination, Terry was a fourth year nursing student at the University of Saskatchewan. She convocated in June and accepted a position in pediatric inpatient unit at the Jim Pattison Children's Hospital in Saskatoon and has also been working casually at the COVID-19 testing center. Her leadership direction is heavily influenced by social justice and equality and equity, excuse me. Her background in anthropology gives her a unique lens to view and navigate healthcare systems, which has molded her nursing practice significantly. She amazed her peers and instructors in her ingenuity in crafting initiatives to support and improve the student experience in the College of Nursing. Her multifaceted roles on the Saskatchewan Nursing Student Association in Saskatoon have been a conduit to, to do this. Terry was the co-founder of the Student Support and Wellness Committee, which supports, supports, promotes, and facilitates student wellness. She created a bi-weekly newsletter to provide her peers with valuable information relating to the SNSAS Student life scholarships, events, and community resources. She persistently utilizes feedback from her peers to learn how to serve them better. Terry believes in the importance of giving back to the community. Last year, Terry created the Digging for the Community initiative, where surplus produce from private and community gardens was harvested by nursing students and donated to local charities as a means to address food insecurity and waste. 
For over two years, Terry has also made weekly visits to the Jim Pattison Children's Hospital Emergency Department with her therapy dog, Ernie. Let's see what her nominators had to say. Um, I was approached by one of Terry's classmates if I would be willing to nominate Terry for this award. And um, I had absolutely no hesitations. Uh, she certainly uh, was a student that I would describe as exemplar. Um, very identifiable early on in the class. Um, someone who, um, when you teach, there are students that will engage in, engage in conversation and critical thinking. And Terry was one from the beginning that would engage and discuss and debate issues with me. In watching Terry interact with her classmates, she was deferred to often uh, as the go-to person in class with regards to questions and problem solving. Um, then in getting to know Terry, I, I understood that she played a very active role. She was the president of the student unions um, in the College of uh, Nursing. So she, she, very, she very clearly showed um, that she was a leader, and a, a leader that I would describe with natural leadership skills. Personally and professionally, I would very much like to say congratulations, Terry. You are a more than deserving candidate. Um, I expect to see and hear great things about you in the future. Um, you do have those skills that, I would, that would bring you to leadership positions. But I know that you will make a difference um, in any and all areas that you choose to work in, both in employment, and I know that you will continue on with your volunteer and your advocacy work because that's, important. that's a very important part of who you are and who you will be. So congratulations, and I look forward to seeing great things of you in the future. Congratulations to Terry. We look forward to seeing where your leadership and commitment to healthcare takes you in your registered nursing career. I now ask that you come online and accept your award. Hi. <laughs> Whew. It's going to be hard to speak after hearing those um, kind, generous words from Susan, one of my mentors and professors. Um, I'm grateful to be joining you from Treaty 6 territory and homeland of the Métis in Saskatoon. Um, I also need to extend a thank you to Cheryl Bessie, who also won an award tonight, another one of my um, mentors and professors, as well as one of my peers who nominated me tonight, um, Stephen Hall. It's, it's an awkward feeling to be called a leader. Um, I don't think of myself in that way. Um, and the only reason why I've been able to take on leadership roles and to make things happen is because I've always had family, community, and friends around me who have um, demonstrated strong leadership. Um, these people have been the source of my inspiration, and they have always been my support. They've um, never made me feel like my ideas were impossible or too big, even though I there's always been side comments about how there's a lack of regular phone calls home, but I would just like to say that goes hand in hand with being in nursing school and not um, taking on too many projects. Um, it's, it's an honor to be viewed as a leader, especially in nursing school. It's a busy time and very stressful. Um, but I also think it's important that I recognize and show gratitude to all the people who are behind the scenes that have made things come together in my projects and have helped strengthen and enable me as a leader. Um, I've been fortunate to work with so many wonderful people who I know have contributed just as much as I have. Um, and I'm, a friend once told me, Terry, you're always spinning with ideas and hopefully in the future, this is something that never changes about me. Um, the only difference is now is I can put this, the nursing lens on these ideas, which we all know can be a very powerful thing. Um, I'm just so proud to be um, joining the profession of nursing as a registered nurse. It's um, definitely a dream come true, and I'm so excited to start, have started this journey in May. 
So um, in closing, I'd like to thank the SRNA, my family, mentors, and peers for this incredible honor. Thank you so much. Thank you and congratulations once again. Our second recipient of the Ruth Hicks Award for Student Leadership is Cole Wojcik. Beyond being one of the most kind, caring, and polite students, Cole Wojcik's nominators noted that he demonstrated great leadership qualities in his year three nursing classes, clinical and in the community, locally, provincially, and nationally, both formally and informally. He's a great role model in and out of the classroom. Cole demonstrates a strong work ethic and desire to learn. Not only is he eager and actively engaged in class and clinical settings, but he inspires others to engage in the learning. Cole advocates for and supports all students, but particularly Indigenous students at the local, provincial, and national level. Cole is an active participant for the University of Regina Nursing Student Union, or URNSS, holding various leadership positions over the years. He's also, he also has been, has represented the SCBSCN, I'm learning, students at the Canadian Nursing Student Association week-long event where he most recently became the new Director of Indigenous Health Advocacy. Cole questions the status quo respectfully and with the intent to improve learning, advanced nursing, and improve patient outcomes. Cole takes opportunities to champion events and his selection of employment is purposeful and demonstrates his commitment to improving the health of his community. His nominators noted that Cole is a student leader and a gift to the program and soon the nursing profession. Let's take a look at what else his nominators had to say. Hi Cole, Jody Found here, Nursing Advisor for Saskatchewan Polytechnic for the SCBSCM program. Coming to you from my home on Treaty 4 land, which I also know includes White Bear First Nations, home to you. A traditional homeland of the Cree, so too Nakoda and Dakota First Nations. On behalf of the faculty, students and staff at Saskatchewan Polytechnic and the University of Regina, we would like to congratulate you on receiving the SRNA Ruth Hicks Award for Student Leadership. The team, including program head Katrazina Moyer and nursing Indigenous advisor Greg Riel, nominated you for this leadership award because you, even though a student, are an amazing leader. You lead with your heart and you role model the way. You show courage and you inspire others. I know you volunteer at many organizations that you are passionate about in your community and um, here in Regina, and we're so grateful for your giving nature. We are also grateful for your contributions to the University of Regina Nursing Student Society as the Indigenous Student Rep, and now Vice President of Student Affairs. It's so nice to be nominated to positions by your peers and you have achieved this at a national level. Congratulations on your most recent student nurse position on the Canadian Nursing Student Association as their director of an Indigenous Health Advocacy. Cole, many of your teachers comment that you are determined, hardworking, you love to learn, you always come prepared and actively participate in discussions, but more than that, they appreciate how you engage other students. You challenge the status quo while maintaining your integrity. You are always respectful and listen to others' points of view. Cole, we are so very proud of you and wish you all the best in your future. You are so deserving of this leadership award. Bye. Congratulations, Cole. We look forward to having you join this rewarding profession. Thank you for your commitment to nursing and your leadership in all aspects of your nursing education program. I now ask that you come online and accept your award. Um, um, I'm sort of tongue-tied because uh, with all the 
kind words and everything that was said tonight. Um, but uh, um, hello everyone. Uh, I'm just very privileged and honored to be um, receiving this award tonight. Um, I'm from White Bear First Nation um, in Treaty 4 territory, um, and I'm enrolled in the CBSCN program. So growing up, I was taught leadership uh, foundationally is based on serving your family, your friends, and most importantly, your community. Um, a really important and uh, uh, foundational uh, philosophy that I was taught by my grandmother and that was um, were a very uh, held really close and very deeply to my great-grandfather uh, Bill Standing Ready uh, was Mina Pimatswin which means like living or leading a good life um, and so to serve and lead to heal and to live resiliently is is a way that one can achieve this and so being a nursing student i've been exposed to many 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 uh, occurrences um where i've had to take charge and lead and or be there and just uh, be be involved and so um being currently being a vice president of earns and uh the director of indigenous health advocacy for the canadian nurses uh, nursing students association um i've had the great honor to be able to serve my community and all my relations across Canada. Um, and I do this because it's something that I love to do. Um, so simply because I love to serve and I love to help, these are the reasons why I've chose healthcare as a, as a career path and, that, and simply why I've chosen nursing to guide me that, uh, along that path. And so I would like to really um, extend my thanks to the SRNA for this amazing award. It, it's truly an honor. And then I'd also like to further extend my thanks um, to those um, who helped me to get where I am today. So first I'd like to say thank you to the SCBS, SCBSCN faculty. Uh, that would be including Jody Found who provided those um, very wonderful words. Um, uh, Bonnie Raisbeck who has supported me through many hard times, um, Kristen Pegan, uh, uh, Ruthann Rimchi, and many, many other faculty. Uh, without them, I wouldn't be in fourth year right now, um, or I wouldn't be as engaged as I've been in nursing um, because their traits of leadership have really influenced me. Um, and then I would like to extend thanks to my family, including my mother, my father, my brother, and my many, many cousins, uh, and my grandparents who've always been there for me in the hardest times. Um, i like to also extend my thanks to the elders uh, and Indigenous academic supports, including Elder Audrey Cochran and Greg Rael, uh, as they've been amazing supports for me uh, during my um, academic path through the CBSN program. Um, I like to send my thanks also to my colleagues and friends, including Melissa Thomas, Luke Biznicki, uh Krista Hellman, Shailen Jewell, Haley Keen, Halsey Naismith, Shay McNabb, and the CNSA board, including Courtney, Emma, Jessica, and Victoria, and also the rest of the Earns Council. Um, because again, without their supports, I um, I would not be here today. Um, and then lastly. Uh, just to thank the rest of my friends and anyone who I missed because without without anyone um, I, I, I wouldn't be um, entering nursing um, as strongly as I have today so um, in closing uh, thank you for this wonderful night uh, Chimigwich Amazing, thank you so much and congratulations, Cole. The next award is the SRNA Life Membership. Life Membership is awarded to a practicing or former practicing member of the association who is now retired from registered nursing. This year, we are honored to welcome three Life members to the SRNA. Our first recipient is Shirley Kerr. 
Shirley Kerr has been a passionate and committed advocate of excellence in nursing throughout her almost 50 year career. Her undeniable commitment to nursing education is evidenced by her contributions at the local, provincial and national level. Shirley is remembered by her colleagues as having high standards for both herself and others, but was always willing to mentor and instill hope in those who struggled with the challenges of maintaining nursing excellence in a changing healthcare system. Shirley has used her excellent interpersonal skills, superior organizational ability, and strong worth ethic to advance many a novice and seasoned nurse. Shirley has spent the majority of her career in education, both in an undergraduate program and to registered nurses seeking to improve their skills. As a respected expert faculty member, innovative curriculum coordinator and former nursing advisor, she has exemplified the essence of excellence in nursing education for nearly five decades. Her attention to detail and knowledge of the curricula were invaluable to both students and faculty. She was never too busy to answer a question or discuss a problem with either a student or colleague. Shirley's nominators noted that her passion, infectious enthusiasm, and high energy served to motivate the entire team she collaborated with. She encouraged and facilitated professional and educational growth of faculty members. Before asking Shirley to accept her award, her nominators had a few things to say about her. My name is Chris Barlow. I'm an academic chair within the School of Nursing at SAS Polytechnic at Saskatoon. And I'm Robin Kobeson, program head with the SCBSCN program in Saskatoon. Shirley Kerr, or as we affectionately say, Nurse Kerr, is an exceptional former nursing faculty member of SAS Polytechnic, formerly SIAST. Shirley was extremely devoted to her students and patients she mentored numerous new faculty, helping them to develop knowledge and confidence in both classroom and clinical settings. She was a highly respected patient and knowledgeable anatomy and physiology lecturer and tutor for many years. She had the ability to spark students' curiosity and to inspire them to learn more, know more, and do more to give the best possible care that they possibly could. Shirley was never too busy to answer a question or discuss a problem with either student or a colleague. She tackled every task with patience and good humor. Over the years, Shirley also taught in the Continuing Nursing Education Program, mentoring practicing and seasoned nurses also. How many nurses in the viewing audience didn't have Shirley Kerr for one course or another? I bet not many. To her very last day, Shirley brought home her bag of books every night in order to ensure she was at the top of her game. Congratulations, Shirley, on your life membership. Shirley, it was our privilege to have known you, learned from you, and worked alongside you during part of your very long nursing career. Congratulations, Shirley. Thank you for your lifelong commitment to nursing education, leadership, and mentorship. I now ask that you come online and accept your award. Well, thank you very much. Um, I, I'm quite overwhelmed by, the, by my nominees' uh, comments. Uh, thank you so very much. Um, it, it's, it's truly is, is um, a privilege to be recognized by one's peers and, and co-workers tonight. Uh, the, the Life Membership Award states that uh, it's given, to, given for significant contribution to the nursing profession in Saskatchewan. And when I read the names of the nurses who have been awarded the Life Membership, I'm truly humbled to be included in this group. I have been actively registered with the SRNA for 50 years and have been very proud to be a registered nurse. Being a nurse has been such a large part of my life. Um, it has given me the opportunity to work with very dedicated and professional nurses in the clinical areas and in the education settings. And I learned from all of them how to become a better nurse and a better educator. 
um, they all, everybody has had a real impact on, on my career. Um, uh, and, and, and with that also, I've developed long friendships with many of those, of those nurses. My first job as an RN was at the University Hospital, now, now RUH. And then I went to SIAST in 1970 uh, to teach in the, in the two-year diploma nursing program. Um, and, and, then, and then, of course, that evolved later into the development of the NEPS program, uh, our baccalaureate program, of course. And so I taught in that as well as in the second degree entry option uh, of that program as well. And then lastly, uh, into the uh, SCBSCN program at, Pol at SAS Polytech. Um, I continued to do some tutoring after that as well. So my whole teaching career, I think, was full time uh, and then part time was, I think, 47 years of, of uh, active teaching, give or take a little bit. Um, I loved teaching nursing students. Um, they challenged me to stay uh, on top of things, to, to stay current. Um, it, it, they encouraged, the, the program, of course, encouraged us to, uh, to bring on, in, to use innovative and um, new teaching methods. Teaching allowed me to be part of the education of many of the nurses in this province and elsewhere, as Robin had mentioned. Um, it's always heartwarming to be recognized and to be approached by a former student. Uh, some of them many years past, uh, some of them decades past. Uh, and it's nice when they stop to say hi, just talk about where their careers have taken them. So if you ever see a former teacher of yours uh, that, that you've had in nursing, uh, take time to stop and say hi. It means a lot, actually. Um, I would like to thank the SRNA Awards Committee for awarding me this life membership. It uh, is very meaningful, uh, and even more so now when I have heard that this is the last of the awards um, being, being uh, delivered. Um, I also want to thank my former colleagues for nominating me, especially Robin Kobison, the program head of the SCBS program, and Chris Barlow, academic chair. Uh, of the nursing programs at SAS Polytech in Saskatoon. Um, they are, uh, we, we worked with them for a number of years um, and, and have fond memories of that, of course. And I'd also like to thank all my other former colleagues uh, for writing letters of support for my nomination. In closing, I would just like to encourage nurses to continue to support each other and to work together and to learn from each other, to teach each other and to strive for excellence in their field of nursing. So thank you very much for the award. All right, well, our second recipient for the SRNA Life Membership is Ren Rennie Lowen. Rennie Lowen has been a recognized leader in nursing education in Saskatchewan for over 47 years. Rennie's outstanding commitment to nursing education is evidenced by her many contributions at the local, provincial, national, and international level. Rennie assisted in curricular development for the Saskatchewan Institute of Applied Science and Technology Diploma Nursing Program, the Nursing Education Program of Saskatchewan, and the Saskatchewan Collaborative Bachelor of Science in Nursing program. Rennie participated in the Nepal Rural Health Worker Development Project, working with registered nurses and NEPS students in Kathmandu, Nepal. She was instrumental in developing a proposal and receiving a grant from Human Resources and Service Development Canada for a student exchange program between Canada, Mexico, and the United States, and also initiated student clinical exchanges with Mexico, India, Jamaica, and the Ukraine. Rennie was the recipient of the SIAST Innovation Award and the SIAST Outstanding Service Award, along with the SRNA Elizabeth Van Valkenburg Award for Excellence in Nursing Education. Rennie's nominators note that her incredible contributions as a nurse educator and her dedication to the nursing profession are most worthy of this recognition. Let's see what her nominators had to add. My name is Chris Barlow. I'm the academic, one of the academic chairs within the School of Nursing at South Polytechnic. And I'm Robin Kobison, 
program head for the SCBSCN program in Saskatoon. Rennie Lowen is an outstanding former nursing faculty member of SAS Polytechnic, formerly SIAST. During her lengthy nursing education career, she championed increasing enrollment of Indigenous and international students, notably by developing and promoting programs such as the Aboriginal Nursing Student Achievement Program. She consistently demonstrated leadership in promoting innovation in nursing education, created a supportive learning environment, facilitated student success, and established and maintained many relationships with provincial, national, and international colleagues. Rennie is respected for her mentorship of both new and experienced nursing faculty spanning both theoretical instruction and in the clinical practice setting. She is highly regarded for her outstanding level of professionalism, vision, and compassion, inspiring all those around her. As nursing advisor, her adherence to the highest ethical and professional standards while patiently supporting faculty and students, especially during the rollout of a new nursing degree program, was remarkable. Rennie's advocacy for international nursing helped benefit NEPS and SCBSCN students through developing opportunities for overseas clinical experience in Nepal, Mexico, India, Jamaica, and the Ukraine. Rennie is an extremely humble individual who does not declare her numerous accomplishments. Congratulations, Rennie, on your life membership. It is truly deserved. It was our privilege to have known you, learned from you, and worked alongside you during your long nursing career. Congratulations, Remy. A much deserved recognition for your outstanding contributions in nursing. I now ask that you come online and accept your award. Thank you so much. Um, I just really have two things about my career in nursing education that I would like to share with you. First of all, I'm very proud and privileged to have been part of the SRNA throughout all of my years in nursing. Secondly, I think the most memorable and probably one of the best parts of my involvement in nursing education throughout the years, aside from teaching nursing students, are the people that I worked with. The nursing faculty and my colleagues at SAS Polytech, U of S and the U of R. I've admired their wisdom, their mentorship and their friendship. And as I look back on those years, I'm also very grateful uh, for the opportunity to work with many national and international faculty and colleagues as well. Together, we worked on numerous educational projects to the betterment, I think, of nurses and nursing education in Canada and also in the countries that we were so fortunate to partner with. Uh, thank you so much to my colleagues for all of your time and your effort and your work uh, in preparing this nomination. And I'm so honored to accept the lifetime membership in the SRNA. Thank you. Congratulations, Rennie. Our final recipient of the SRNA Life Membership is Linda McLeod. Throughout Linda McLeod's career in nursing education, she held many positions such as facilitator in the classroom, laboratory, and clinical areas in numerous courses and nursing units. She excelled in her role as clinical advisor where she provided support to students and faculty. Linda sat on various committees, including Clinical Placement for Nursing Division, Curriculum and Evaluation Committees. She was the recipient of distinguished awards, including the SRNA Elizabeth Van Valkenburg Award for Leadership in Nursing Education, Kelsey Syast Outstanding Service Award, and Certificate of Merit Mentorship Nursing Division in Syast. Linda's outstanding quality is her professionalism, excellence in nursing and nursing education. She was a positive role model for students and faculty. Let's see what her nominators had to say. I'm Chris Barlow. I'm an academic chair within the School of Nursing for SAS Polytechnic at Saskatoon. 
Hi, my name is Robin Kobison, and I'm program head for the SCBSCN program in Saskatoon. Linda McLeod is a well-respected former nursing faculty member of Saskatchewan Polytechnic, formerly SIAST. Linda was an extremely knowledgeable, ethical, professional nurse educator and role model who strived to ensure that upon graduation, nursing students were well prepared for their role as registered nurses. She excelled in her role as clinical advisor, where she provided support to students and faculty in the clinical area. Linda role modeled and believed in professional development and lifelong learning. She strived to incorporate research and best practices into her role as both classroom and clinical educator. She coached many a faculty member in the development of manuals, resources, and courses. Linda was also known for her wickedly delightful dry sense of humor, candor, experience, and valuable contributions in policy development. Congratulations, Linda, on your life membership. It was our privilege to have known you, learned from you, and worked alongside you during part of your long nursing career. Congratulations, Linda. Thank you for your outstanding commitment to nursing education, leadership, and mentorship. I now ask that you come online and accept your award. First of all, I would like to thank the SRNA for this award. It comes at a special time as it is 50 years since I first registered with the SRNA. I would also give a special thanks to Signe, <coughs> excuse me, Sidney Klebeck and Robin Kobison for submitting this life membership award. I extend my congratulations to all of you who have received awards tonight. Last but not least, thanks to my family, especially my husband, Alan, for all the support through my nursing career. Thank you very much. Thank you and congratulations. Our final award of the evening is the SRNA Honorary Membership. The SRNA Honorary Membership is a award to a non-nurse or a nurse registered outside of Saskatchewan and is granted by council in, recog uh, in recognition of distinguished service to the registered nursing profession or for valuable assistance to registered nursing in Saskatchewan. I'll correct myself, it's not an award, it's awarded to. <laughs> this is indeed a very special award. The last time we awarded an honorary membership to the SRNA was in 2012, and past distinguished award recipients include Lieutenant Governor of Saskatchewan, Dr. Gordon Barnhart, L Lieutenant Colonel Harriet Sloan, and Roy Romano. We are very pleased to award our final SRNA honorary membership to Heather Thiessen. Heather Thiessen has made significant, significant contributions to the registered nursing profession and to healthcare. As a passionate advocate for advancing patient family-centered care, interprofessional education, and collaborative practice, Heather has worked with health professionals, patients, health science students and leaders in both practice and education. She draws on her own extensive patient journey as she travels across the province and the country to fulfill her commitment in making the experiences of future patients and families positive and safe. For the last decade, Heather has been part of numerous quality improvement events in the Saskatchewan Health Authority, has presented at provincial and national conferences, and is an integral part of educating future registered nurses and other, other health sciences students. Heather's role as an advocate, leader, researcher, educator, patient family advisor, and member of a health care team has had enormous impacts on the education and practice of patient and family-centered care. Her nominators noted that whether Heather is teaching a group of nursing students, speaking to 700 health science students, presenting at National Nursing Conference, or working with Accreditation Canada, her vision for a health system that embraces a genuine partnership with patients and families is clear. Let's see what else her nominators had to say. Heather Thiessen is passionate about improving the quality of healthcare. Uh, she's relentless in ensuring that 
patients and families become the center of the system. Heather has life-challenging health problems and that doesn't stop her. Uh, it makes her more committed because she realizes how vulnerable patients and their families are. I think Heather's passion for, for the future um, education of health professionals. So for registered nursing, uh, and she's just so passionate about trying to impact the attitudes and knowledge and skills of, of future nurses. It's clearly evident in, in what she does and she's very good at it. I think that a leader has to be an educator, has to be somebody who can educate the people around them about the challenges in the system to help them come to making a better system. And Heather is an educator by profession, but she takes that the skills that she has from that and she uses them to help uh, health professionals and decision makers understand how the system can be better. Heather is, I think by, na by nature, very collaborative, and so she spends a lot of time uh, consulting with and working with, uh, with people. I'm Dr. Lois Berry, and with my colleague, Dr. Hope Belinsky from the College of Nursing, we have nominated uh, Heather Thiessen for an honorary uh, registered nurse role. Uh, award and she is uh, very deserving of this so uh, we're very proud on behalf of the college to have made this nomination. Hi my name is Hope Belinsky. I'm the Associate Dean at the College of Nursing the University of Saskatchewan and Heather I just want to congratulate you for receiving this honorary membership of the SRNA. You're most deserving and it was a pleasure to put your nomination package together. Heather I am so Please, that our profession has chosen to recognize you this way because you deserve it. I am so proud to be a colleague and I have learned so much from you about how to be a better nurse and the students in the health professions that you come in touch with, and they are many, uh, can't help but benefit from the stories that you tell. So I'm so proud and so glad to be celebrating this with you. Congratulations, Heather. You're truly an outstanding advocate for nursing and healthcare in Saskatchewan, and we are honored to present the honorary membership to you. As Sabine said, we haven't given this award for eight years. So we want to take the time to celebrate this wonderful accomplishment. We've asked Heather to spend a little bit more time with us, really sharing her experience with the nursing community and the impact registered nurses and the profession has had on her life. I will now invite Heather to come online, accept her award and share some words with us. Thank you so very much. I'm, I'm so deeply honored. Um, and thank you so much to the SNA for this award. I need to thank Dr. Lois Berry and Dr. Hope Belinsky for nominating me. Um, they truly understand what authentic partnership means. Um, they allow me to be the first patient that nursing students at the U of S nursing program get to meet as I'm able to welcome them into their journey into becoming nurses and all the way to doing through our classes with third year nursing students. I so love working with students because I know um, students are our future in healthcare and it's by helping them to understand the importance of partnership with patients and families that is going to improve healthcare and ensure that patients have positive journeys in their health experience. So I've been asked to share a little bit about my journey as a patient in the healthcare system. So sit back, relax, um, get a little bag of popcorn, and I'll share this with you. Um, my dream was to be a nurse. Um, it was one of my lifelong goals. As a child, I loved playing with my Barbies and having my makeshift um, nursing units all in my basement. And I dreamed of being a neonatal intensive care nurse. At the age of 20, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and I was just starting on my journey to becoming a nurse and I had to rethink things because the way the MS was affecting me, I um, was not able to handle studies 
and I was in and out of hospital all the time. When life settled, I was able to um, work as a long-term disability adjudicator, which I love doing that because I was able to work with patients and families in a different way on their journey back to work. And I married my wonderful husband, John. John and I have just celebrated our 27th wedding anniversary this year. And that is a milestone for us because often when one um, person is chronically ill in a marriage, it statistically ends in divorce. I am grateful because um, John is my partner and he has stuck with me through thick and thin. And that is why um, we've had such an amazing long marriage. Um, shortly after though we got married, I had my first daughter, Anna, in 1996. And when Anna was three months old, she, um, um, I ended up, I'm sorry, my dog is scratching at the door, so don't worry about that. But that is live. Um, web it, um, Zoom for you. So I'm just ignoring the dog. But when Anna was three months old, um, I went into respiratory failure and ended up in ICU on a ventilator. And um, I remember a physician coming to my bedside and saying, um, with a tracheostomy, putting it on the bedside table saying, have a good look at this. You'll probably end up with it for the rest of your life and walked out of the room. And I thought, well, that's kind of rude. Um, that's not going to happen to me. I had a one-off with a respiratory issue. And so I did recover. Life carried on. And then um, my second daughter, Paulina, was born. When she was nine months old, I went into respiratory failure again. And this baffled all my doctors because people with MS don't end up in ICU on ventilators. So they brought in another specialist, a physiatrist, and Dr. Hader was brought to my bedside. I'm laying in an ICU bed on a ventilator, and he had a smile on his face because he said, I think I know what's going on with you. So we went and had a CT scan. And after the CT scan, when I was in my hospital room, he had a bigger smile. And what they had discovered is that my thymus, which is normally a little ball of fat, had grown into a tumor. And it illustrated that I had another neurological condition called myasthenia gravis, may, uh, grave muscle disease. It's a very rare disorder. So number four in the world to have both myasthenia and MS, yay me. Um, but the MS was a little bit less um, severe as we once thought. Unfortunately for me, the myasthenia was gonna send me on an amazing journey. They had hoped after we did a thymectomy that I would go into remission. I had hoped because I had two little girls in, um, at home and I wanted to see them grow up. I also had hope of maybe going back to school and getting my degree. Um, from 1998 to 2009, I spent every six months being rushed to emergency in respiratory failure, ending up in a, on a ventilator from anywhere from two weeks to four months, a lot of birthdays, Christmases, anniversaries, life events were held in the hospital. Um, I'm very grateful for so many of the nurses who made that journey easier. My daughter's third birthday was in the ICU and they uh, had cupcakes for her, blew up little latex free balloons and uh, gloves as balloons for her. And um, it's still one of the most important birthdays for her. So I'm thankful for those nurses who went and above and beyond the call of duty there. Um, I've been intubated probably 15 times and I've had two tracheostomies. So my journey in the healthcare system was up and down and all around. And how did I get more actively involved in my healthcare? It was after a very long admission to the ICU. I was in over Christmas, don't recommend it, but again, the nurses made it wonderful for our family but I was going home and it was almost Easter and I was so excited because I was going to be able to spend time with my children. So I made my daughter's little dresses, which we were never allowed to talk about or show pictures of, but I do anyways. And I created an Easter egg hunt. I was so excited. The day before Easter, I got a call from a physician who knew me very well. And so because I'm in the hospital, I get IVIG treatment every single week. 
I have a PIC line in my arm, and because you lose IV access when you're a frequent flyer of the healthcare system. The day before Easter, I got a call from him, and he said, Heather, your line is infected. You need to come to the hospital now. I looked at my husband, and I said, nope, not going, because I know what happens on holiday weekends in a hospital. Not a lot. And I'd rather spend time with my children. This is why I have a great husband, because John said, no, we can't afford you to get sicker, Heather. So off I went to the hospital like a five-year-old, pouting and stomping my feet. And when we reached the hospital, we were put in one of the hospital rooms in the emergency. And the physician who knew me well came in. And he said, Heather, your line's infected. We're going to admit you, and yada, yada. I, 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 I stopped listening because I was so heartbroken. So I looked at him because I had a brilliant idea. And I said, how about you give me a dose of antibiotics, let me go home for the night. I promise to come back tomorrow. I need this time with my children. He looked at me and said, if you go home, you'll die. And he walked out of the room. Well, I of course started crying. So my husband, John said, don't worry, I'll go talk to him. So John went out and said, could you be a little gentler with Heather? You know what she's been through. I know she's probably asking way too much. I'm asking you to be more empathetic and work with her. With that, John got, um, if you don't like the way I'm treating your wife, I suggest you leave. But he went a step further. He called security and had my husband escorted out. I was left alone, John was not allowed back in, and my family was not allowed to see me. And to top things off, treatment was not started until after I was admitted onto the medicine unit. So I had a lot of time to think, being all by myself, and I was worried a little bit about me, but I was more worried about other patients and families and what were they experiencing. And I was really worried about that. And I thought, I need to be part of the change. I need to be part of conversations about how we're gonna improve healthcare. And around this time, something wonderful was happening in Saskatchewan. And in 2008-2009, Tony Dagony was commissioned by the new Saskatchewan government to do the Patient First Review. Patient First Review is a landmark document in Canadian and Saskatchewan history. That document saved my life. Out of that document, um, Tony uh, Dagony spoke to over 4,000 patients, families, and care providers and asked what was working well in healthcare and not so well in healthcare. There were three um, documents created from that report, 12 recommendations. The overarching recommendation is that we needed to shift from a, a system-centered healthcare system to one that was more patient and family-centered and really put focus on the needs and wants of patients and families within our healthcare system. I am so thankful for that document and I make it my journey to ensure um, students understand the importance of that document and understand that they play such an important role in the journey of the patients and families that they will be with. So I've been on an incredible journey uh, being able to partner with um, numerous health sciences students. My heart belongs to nursing because I wanted to be one. And I am thankful for the many opportunities that I've gotten to be able to partner with health systems, um, but with our students because they are our future. I do want to thank the SRNA for this award. I cried when my award arrived the other day um, because it means so much to me. It's almost saying I am that nurse that I really wanted to be. Um, and I am changing healthcare because I'm able to do it in a different way as the voice of a patient who has that lived experience, expertise, and bringing it to help health leaders and everyone within the health system understand the importance of that patient voice. Thank you to Hope and um, Lois again. They are my partners. They um, know me and they give me great opportunities. 
I need to thank as well my wonderful family because they have been by my side. Um, I'm very sad because my dad passed away five years ago. He would be so thrilled because my dad was at every ICU admission with me. He um, would sit by my bedside and watch as they did plasma exchange. He would joke and get to know all the nurses and um, he would be so thrilled, but I know he's with me today and he's so proud of his little girl. Um, I need to thank my amazing IC, ICU nurses at RUH, as long, along with my neuro nurses at RUH. They have been amazing and helped me on my journey as well. And they have welcomed my oldest daughter, Anna, who is now a nurse. She graduated in um, the pandemic and she is working on the neurology unit. Who'd have thought that a child who grew up on the neuro unit would be working there. I am forever proud of that kid. And I'm so proud of my other daughter, Paulina, who is in Vancouver. And she has always been there to support me as well as everyone in my family. Finally, I'm going to thank, um, well, I have two more thanks, sorry, I'll be quick. But my amazing nurses at RUH in the Oncology Day Center where I go every single week for my IVIG treatments. Terry and Alice were the first to greet me and they have since retired from nursing. I'm gonna outlive everybody because I'll be going till the day I die. But um, Val and Nicole are there now. These nurses have helped me to trust in a healthcare system. I was broken when I first started as a patient advisor and a patient advocate. I needed time to heal because my journey has been so up and down. You've only seen snippets, but I have had many, many experiences throughout my journey, some of them positive and some of them very negative. And they brought trust back to me. So I am trusting in a healthcare system. So thank you to them. And um, finally, I, I really want to thank all the patient and family um, advisors, the, the uh, resident advisors who partner every single day with our health systems here in Saskatchewan and across Canada and around the world. Here in Saskatchewan, we have over 600 patient and family advisors, and they bring their story to help shape our health system, but also work with students in new and creative ways. We will build a better healthcare system and we're gonna do it in partnership. So thank you very, very much. I am so deeply honored. Heather, I'm sure I speak for many tonight that are tuning in that you've left us all with goosebumps. Congratulations on the award and John, you're a rock star. <laughs> Congratulations to the Awards of Excellence recipients. To further honor our award recipients tonight, the Saskatoon Public Schools Indigenous Ensemble will now play the honor song. For those who are not familiar, the honor song is performed to recognize the achievement or deeds of an individual or a group of individuals. Honor songs are traditionally performed by a recognized singer or group of singers, either with a personal hand drum or a full-size drum. Please join me in celebrating our honorees through song. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen here. We'd like to uh, introduce a, a honor song to the honored individuals here on this great evening. We'll share with you uh, a special song that comes to the people. And we sing these songs in acknowledgement to those that have done great deeds those that have done well in the communities. And during this time of the pandemic, many of our nurses, many of the people that were on the front lines, they gave all that they could and they continue to give all that they can on behalf of our communities, our families and our nations. Here this evening, we share with you a rendition of an honor song going out to our honored individuals tonight. Enjoy.
I would like to once again congratulate all of the 2020 SRNA Awards of Excellence recipients. I also need to give a big shout out. You can't see them behind the scenes right now, uh, but I have a small but mighty team working behind the scenes to get this all on air. Tanya, Brad, and the teleprompter extraordinaire, Terry, for helping us tonight. This concludes our evening. Thank you so much for being here and for helping us to honor our award recipients tonight. In closing, on behalf of the SRNA, thank you for all logging on and joining us here this evening. Thank you once again to our sponsors for this evening, Health Careers in Saskatchewan and Saskatchewan Polytechnic. And thank you for allowing me to be a part of your evening and MC your event tonight. It has truly been an honor.